Hi guys, welcome back. Um, if you can't tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be looking at Lyme Carm's Venus Immortalis. But first, if this is your first time here, feel free to reach down and hit like. If this is not your first time here, feel free to reach down and hit subscribe. Either or, whatever makes you feel comfortable. This is my second attempt to film this video. Um, the attempt I made yesterday to do this was literally a first impression and it did not go well, so I, I decided to try a second time. Also, if you're noticing what looks like dark lining under my eyes, it's actually the Charlotte Tilbury's Legendary Lashes just deciding to leave its own mark. The more I use that mascara, the less I like it. I really wish I hadn't gotten that one. Okay, Lime Crime's Venus Immortalis. Now, I purchased this at Ulta, this and one other. Now, I'm not gonna lie, what got my attention was the description using the word grunge, being an eternal child of the 90s and grunge rock. I paused, back to point. This is Venus Immortalis. Yes, that is a white in the corner. We have Unseen, Echo, Moth, Marble, Unveil, Ash, Hail and Cameo. Now I had a little bit of a mixed review about this yesterday. Like the more I used it, the more I like certain aspects of it and the more certain aspects of it, I just hate it. Like, let's give you swatches to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's start off with Unseen. Echo, Moth and Marble. The black is beautifully pigmented. I'm gonna give you that. The metallics come off gorgeous. A little surprised by that. This is where we get into the part I'm not keen on. That's moth. That's as visible as it is. Apparently my skin tone is moth. And then here's the white one. Can you see the white? Not very pigmented, honestly, for even a white. Let's add a little bit more. Let me see it. That's the top row. So out of four on the top row, you can see three-ish. And the fourth is pretty much invisible. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's not a great start off point. Let's face it. I'm paying, I think it was like $30 for this, $32, somewhere in there. And at least already 25% of that is not visible on me. Okay, let's try at the bottom. Unveil. Ash, hail, and then like hail to the chief, not a hail, and cameo. Now, I do have to say, these are really soft. I'm not even going to pretend these are soft. That is a ruddy color. That, that's got a purple undertone. The gray is pretty, but not super pigmented, if you can't tell. Another metallic, except this is all silver. The other one is kind of a bronzy color. And then there's our cameo. That's it. That is all eight colors. And if you can't tell two of them, you can barely see. Not a great track record so far. It kind of reminds me of a smaller version of Jeffree Star's Cremated Palette, but not as useful. Or should I say Jeffree Star's Cremated Palette kind of reminds me of this miniature palette because I'm pretty sure this one came out first. Now we're gonna try and make a look out of this. I think part of my frustration on this palette I had was unless you are literally like the Venus de Milo or the Venus whatever, white marble, part of this palette just won't show up on you. So it, it doesn't really matter like if you're my skin tone or another one, it's just not gonna be there because it's not very pigmented. And it's not even a very dark color. Moth, marble, and cameo. It's this section here that is just driving me bonkers. Like, this I can live with. This is okay. This? What is the point of this if I can't even be seen? If it can't even be seen on me. So we're going to try making an eye look out of this. But I can't promise it's going to go any better than it did yesterday. Like, by the end of the video, I was just so annoyed and frustrated at this palette. And sometimes I think it's just because I'm a sucker for certain words. 
I will see it and be like, let me try it. What the heck? Okay. We're going to start off with Ash the Gray. And yes, my eyes are already prepped. It is a very pretty gray. I'm not going to lie. But it's not exactly what I would call very pigmented and its application can be a touch patchy in spots which is why you'll notice I've had to dip more than once to do this already okay we've got gray on and that line is driving me nuts let's just get to the edge of the eyelash line Okay, there's that. Now we're gonna try moth. Watch this. This is this is part of what frustrates me. And that's it. That's as much as that shows up. So not really at all. I mean, I understand the point of some nice, you know, like medium colors, but I don't know. What is the point if it can't be seen? Like I can kind of see it in person, but on the camera, you're not even getting any glimpse of it at all. It's like non-existent. So there's that as a frustration. Let's dip into Unveil. It's that reddish purplish color, which actually I kind of like this color. I'm not going to pretend. Okay, and now we blend. Blend, 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 blend. Blend, blend. It's actually a very lovely reddish color, which I'm actually, I like a lot. I'm not gonna lie. But as you can see by the blend, it kind of blends a lot away. Like it's, it's not even kind of fighting to stay. There's not a lot of staying power. And I did prep my eyelids with the 24 hour eyeshadow insurance by Too Faced. Let's try blending that a little bit more again. There we go. That blends pretty. I don't mind that too much. See, not minding that too much. And just for grins and giggles, because we're doing mostly gray, we're gonna use hail, like hail to the chief. And dab that on a little bit. Just to get a little to the eye area. And that's where we come into the hard part. I'm trying to figure out now how I can use the rest of this palette in a way that will not rely on the three colors that do not show up. So I'm going to try something and we will see how it looks. I have this bad feeling it's going to look like mud. We'll learn out, to, we'll figure it out together. We're gonna dip into Unveil. As it stands, I'm not sure this palette will get much use. It is a very flawed palette. Like I was so excited and it was like an impulse buy. I'm not even gonna pretend. It's definitely an impulse buy. I was like, oh, 
my goodness, yay. You know, all the Carrie's Lime Crime, I've never tried it. And I'm really glad I talked myself out of like the expensive big palette because um, if it's anything like this one, I would have been sorely, sorely disappointed. Okay, see actually when this one blends out quite a bit, it's a very pretty color. I'm kind of surprised by that. Like I could see wearing just this one color and an eyeliner and calling it even, like a winged eyeliner. No, actually this is a really lovely color in person. Okay, we've got that there. Now, let's try with the black as a smoke shade. I mean, can you get any smokier than black? Like, not really. Let's blend now. I feel like I'm blending, like, you know, there's a fine line between grunge and goth. And I feel like this palette just walks that line and not well. We're gonna stand up and look at this one in the mirror when we're done. Okay. So we've got a gray base. With the moth, it can't be seen. Let's put a little, you know what? Just out of curiosity, let's try, let's try moth. I feel like moth is already trying to hard pan on me too. In the center of our eye. It's supposed to be like a pinky tone. even that's not really visible. That is part of my problem, I think. Let's try again. Now, this is supposed to be a pinky because my skin color, pretty much. Let's try out of curiosity if marble will show up anywhere. Oh wow, okay, it shows up some. I'm not sure what I would use it for other than like as a lightning tool like this. I'll work on it. Let's stand up and take a look, see. Two different color sets. I'm not loving this. I'm not loving this palette, and I do enjoy grays. I do enjoy grungy. Like, I'm one of those people that walks the line in between grungy and pretty, and I like to do both. <sighs> and this palette kind of promised grungy. In fact, that was literally in the descriptor at the store for it was grungy. And 
I'm not sure. That's really what we got. It feels like we just got a couple of deep smoke colors, called it a palette, and didn't put any more effort into this. Like, I would not have bought, I would, if I could have tested it at Ulta, I don't think I would have bought it, if that makes sense. Because of COVID, you're not allowed to test anything in the stores, which is not exactly what I would call, you know, a great scenario for buying makeup. So. Okay. Anybody else tried Lime Crime? Anybody else tried Venus Immortalis? Anybody else have a better palette than Lime Crime might have made? Because I've heard a lot of great reviews for Lime Crime, but trying this, I'm really wondering why I heard so many good reviews. Because this is just not a great one. Now this is good, it does, on note, it does say it is certified vegan and cruelty free. There is the Leaping Bunny and it is 12 months it says. And it says it's made in the USA. Okay. I guess my end thoughts on this are, I better figure out how to use this for winter because it sure it isn't gonna be a spring or summer palette. This is really a disappointment, like a super big disappointment. I heard so many good things about the brand or at least the way the makeup applied and the way it looked and then it's like, Ugh. Come on, am I the only one who's had, felt let down with this brand? Anybody? Like, I kind of feel like for those three shades that unless you are that marble, that marble image of that person, they're not gonna show on you. And even then, this one's not gonna show on you, the uh, marble itself. I think you have to be more of a medium skin tone, honestly, for all of these to show. Like a pale skin tone, these three are not showing. A medium skin tone, they might show as a contrast, but not on somebody as light as me. I don't know. I might have to give it to a friend and see what she thinks, let her play with it for a little bit, give you guys an update. I don't know. As it stands right now, I said don't buy this one. This one's crap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it because I paid for it. I'm going to try and figure out a way to use it because I paid for it. Or I'm going to give it away. It's not going in the garbage because I paid for it. Somebody will use it. I'm just not very happy with the options in this palette. And like I said, there's a fine line between grunge and goth. And I feel like they crossed that line and went straight into the territory of goth. Which was not what I was looking for with this palette. So, okay guys, tell me what you think. Has anybody else tried this brand? I've never tried this brand before and this was a first attempt and I have one other little mini palette like this from them I'm going to try. I'm hoping it turns out better. We shall see. It might be one of those things where the two of them will have to be used together to make either one worthwhile. I don't know. We're going to find out. So give me a message. Shout me out. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you guys have tried this brand before. What's up? What's up? What's up? Let me know if you have any suggestions or potentially requests. Okay, guys, be safe. Remember, social distancing, wear a mask, wash your hands. And remember, your essential employees are trying. Be patient, please. Thanks. Have a nice night.